Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be testing out a bunch of your game-changing makeup techniques. I did a video like this probably about six months ago and I've been wanting to do another one ever since because it's just, I feel like it's really fun to switch up how you apply makeup. Sometimes you might find a brand new technique that you've never tried before that totally changes the game for you. I definitely still use some of your techniques that I learned back in that original video even to this day, like especially the inner corner highlight. It was a tip from Allie Glines called the scoopity boopity technique, but she brings her inner corner highlight up kind of into the inner part of the crease. I still do that almost every single day. It's such a great tip. So I asked you guys the other day on my community tab to share your game-changing tips, whether it was something that you came up with yourself or you learned it from a makeup artist or influencer. And we're gonna try a bunch of them today. I pretty much have a tip for every single step of my routine. The first technique I'm gonna try comes from Denise. Um, and I feel like this might be a good technique to use for my cream or my liquid highlighter that's currently in my project pan. But Denise said, putting a cream highlighter that's close to my skin tone under my eyes with my concealer over it to give a brighten and dewy look under my eyes. I feel like I tried this a long time ago. I don't think it was in my other testing your techniques video. I can't remember when I tried it, maybe it was. <laughs> but anyway, I wanna try it again because I feel like this might be a really good way to multitask this product and be able to get some more use out of it. This is the Becca Liquid Highlighter in Champagne Pop. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of this onto my under eyes. I kind of am just curious to see how this might make my under eyes look a little bit brighter. And this is a nice subtle highlight. It's not very like glittery or shimmery or anything. Like it does have a sheen to it, but there's not like chunky particles of glitter, so I feel like it's a good one to use for this technique. And yeah, I feel like you almost can't even tell that I just applied highlighter there, but it does look nice and bright and kind of hydrated there. So let's go ahead and get into the base products, and I have a few different techniques I'm going to try for these steps. So one comes from Megan, and Megan said, spot concealing before foundation and letting the concealer set for a few minutes to increase the coverage. This helps cover my acne and acne scars. And then similarly from Carolyn, if you want a high coverage concealer, let it sit about 10 to 20 seconds before blending it out and use a brush. Huge change for myself and the hereditary under eye bags and discoloration. I also have hereditary under eye circles that I'm always struggling to cover. And then this is a really interesting one. This one really intrigues me. I feel like I'm not gonna like it, but I feel like that's why I should try it because that's kind of the whole point of this video is like trying things that I wouldn't normally try. Um, and this says putting, or not putting any concealer or foundation over the nose makes me look like I'm not wearing any base product at all. No cakey or full makeup vibe. Perfect no makeup makeup look. And that, that tip was learned from Violette or Violette FR. And then the final base technique that I wanted to try is from Anne, um, and this says, wetting my sponge with setting spray to apply foundation works really well for me. So let's go ahead and start with my spot concealer, that tip from Megan. And I'm gonna use for my spot concealing my Pacifica Liquid Cover Concealer that's in my project pan. I actually do like this for face spot concealing, I just really don't like it under the eyes. So I'm gonna just kind of dot this around the areas where I normally might build up my foundation more. All right, I think it has been about 10 to 20 seconds of this kind of just sitting on my skin. And then I'm gonna go in with my Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush to just kind of blend that into my skin. And I'm also gonna try to just generally, there were a lot of tips about just kind of spot concealing the areas that need it and then just either using no foundation or using less foundation. I am still gonna use foundation today, but I'm gonna try to just use less than I normally would. I do feel like I'm getting good coverage out of this. And part of that's probably because I'm using a brush, but I also feel like letting it sit for a second kind of helped it somehow have more coverage. All right, so now that I've spot concealed, my face is already looking nice and even. I am gonna go in with foundation, but I'm just gonna kind of try to use less, and I'm also gonna skip my nose like that one tip suggested. So really curious about that. I'm worried that it's gonna look obvious that my nose has no foundation on it. Not that I really have anything to cover on my nose, but I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical of this one, but that's why I wanna try it. And I'm also going to wet my sponge with my setting spray. 
So this is the sponge is dry right now, and I'm gonna wet it with the Revolution Fix and Glow Dewy Finish Spray. I am loving this spray so far. Um, this was one of the products that I picked up in my recent Ulta Shop With Me video, and then I tried it out on camera in a testing drugstore makeup video. Um, so far, so far I am absolutely loving it, but I've never tried it for this purpose. Um, so I'm just gonna spray, I don't know, I feel like I'm wasting a lot in the air. <laughs> But I'm just going to try to get this nice and coated with setting spray. Yeah, I feel like I just wasted a ton. But I also wanted it to be, like, nice and wet. And I'm going to go in with my Kosas Revealer Foundation that I am also loving right now. I did a little bit less than a full pump there. And I'm just going to spread this around on my face like normal. But again, skipping the nose this time. I kind of like the idea of wetting my sponge with a setting spray because rather than using water, the I like the idea of kind of having my setting spray mix with my foundation a little bit better than having water mix with my foundation. There's just something about that that seems to make more sense. <laughs> like maybe it's kind of helping to set the foundation into place. I don't know. I, I like the idea. So I am kind of going around these little nose crevices but I am skipping the nose as a whole. I just I also have like marks from my glasses that I was wearing earlier. I might try to cover that a tiny bit with my under eye concealer, but what do you guys think? I feel like to me it's obvious that I skipped my nose <laughs> with foundation because the rest of my face has foundation on it and then like I know that my nose has nothing on it, so it's just kind of like feels wrong to me. All right, so from there, I'm gonna apply my under eye concealer and I'm gonna use my Kosas Revealer Concealer. And then again, we're gonna try letting this sit for 10 to 20 seconds before blending it in. I am gonna take a little bit here into the inner corner. All right, so that has sat on my skin for about, probably about 20 to 30 seconds. And this tip did say to blend it out with a brush. I generally just don't like blending out concealers with a brush. I feel like it always just makes it look kind of streaky no matter what brush I use, but I'm gonna try that and I may kind of tap over it with my fingers afterwards, but I'm gonna use that, that same Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush and just kind of pat it in. And this Kosas Concealer is one that, it gives good coverage. It's definitely not a full coverage concealer, and sometimes I do wish it had just like a teeny bit more coverage. So I'm going to see if this gives me kind of the higher coverage look that I like. Honestly, I feel like that gave me about the same amount of coverage that I'm used to getting with this concealer. Like, I don't feel like it dramatically increased the coverage, which is kind of surprising, but I am going to put just a little teeny bit more right here. and blend that with my sponge. But I do think my under eyes look exceptionally hydrated and bright, and I think part of that is because this is a very hydrating concealer. I do kind of feel like that liquid highlighter also played a part in that. So yeah, especially this one. This under eye looks amazing right now. Maybe there are other concealers where letting it sit for 20 seconds on the under eyes would make a bigger difference. I just don't feel like it made that big of a difference with this one in particular. All right, so moving on to some cheek tips. Uh, Crystal said, putting my contour where my blush would go on my cheekbones, my blush where my highlighter would go, and then layering highlight on top of the blush. Uh, when I tell you the absolute lift it gives my face is amazing. No more contour in the hollows for me. So I am really excited to try this. I do normally contour or bronze kind of right here in this zone, which is kind of the hollows of my cheeks. So I, I do want to see what applying it a little bit higher up will do. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna apply this contour a little higher. Yeah, that is kind of like the very top of my cheeks where I would normally apply blush. And then I am also going to apply some up here on my forehead. And just blending that out with this BK Beauty 106 brush. Ooh, I don't mind that at all actually. And I feel like, you know, sometimes when you apply it directly to the hollows of your cheeks, inevitably, some of it is going to end up a little bit lower than that as you blend it, but this is kind of making sure that it keeps, it, it, all of it is in the hollow and above. So, that is a smart tip.
Oh, and that was my Oma Beauty double take contour stick, by the way. <laughs> Forgot to say what I was using. I am also going to apply my blush higher up. There were quite a few people who mentioned that, but there were also a couple of people who mentioned applying blush all the way up to their eyes, which is something I've been playing around with a little bit more lately, but I, I don't feel like I've fully committed to it. But I honestly love this idea. I know for some reason blush placement can be so polarizing. Like some people are very against like the sunburnt blush <laughs> trend. I'm sure a lot of people are very against putting your blush all the way up to your eyeballs, but I love this idea. I feel like it's gonna make my face look a lot more lifted and youthful. This is from Sandra. Sandra said, uh, I put bl blush right under my eyes. I take whatever blush I want and put it on the highest part of my cheekbones near the outer corners of my eyes and then I fade the blush inwards right under the eyes. You can top it off with blush on the bridge and tip of your nose too, which I absolutely will be doing. <laughs> and this blush look is so dreamy, I wear it every time. I'm so excited. Right, and for this, I'm gonna use my new Milani cream blush in the shade Nude Kiss. This was also part of my Ulta haul. I think this is my new favorite blush. I don't mean to be <laughs> too dramatic and I don't wanna to speak too soon, but like, I really like this so far. I'm gonna use the same brush that I use for contour. And I'm gonna start by applying it kind of like, I think it was Crystal said, to where I would normally apply highlighter, like kind of higher up on the cheekbone. I'm just gonna start with that and then I will slowly start to blend it towards my under eye. But this blush is just, it's just stunning on my cheeks. Like it just looks so smooth and natural on my cheeks. The finish of it is just this perfect, hydrated kind of like slightly dewy but not shimmery at all i don't know it's it's just really nice all right here we go taking it all the way to the under eye feels pretty weird to be doing this at first but like i don't know i can kind of understand i do feel like that's picking up some of my concealer though it's the only thing i was afraid of and i am gonna apply Ooh, that was probably too much to the nose Going a little ham here, let's calm down, calm down. Okay, so thoughts on that. I really do like that higher blush placement. I do feel like it's just kind of made my face look nice and lifted, but my only issue is that I feel like it really lifted up some of my under eye concealer. So maybe this would be better for me to do like after I've set my under eye concealer with powder and then do it with a powder blush instead of a cream blush. But I don't know. I always have this issue with under eye concealers. Speaking of under eye concealer though, there were also some tips about not setting the under eyes with powder, which I have to say, at first I was very resistant. I was like, no, it doesn't work for me. I'm not gonna try it. But <laughs> I am gonna try it today. I'm gonna try not setting my under eyes. This one came from Sarah Walden. I never powder my under eyes. My concealer, any kind, creases no matter what, and the creases are worse drier and more noticeable and harder to fix when I use powder. It also makes my skin look flat and dry. Not setting my under eyes has been a game changer in terms of how happy I am with my makeup throughout the day. The Kosas Revealer Concealer, which is what I used, is my favorite for this method. It looks hydrated, but it sets without powder. So, you know, honestly, as now that I'm looking at my face again, I don't feel like the blush took away too, too much coverage. And... I'm gonna, I do feel like out of all the concealers I have, the Kosas one is gonna be the best because I agree, in a weird way, it does kind of set itself while still having a hydrated finish. Like it doesn't set down to a matte finish, but it's not as crease prone as other concealers. So maybe at the end, I might tap on a teeny bit more just to get a little more coverage, but I don't know, honestly, I'm okay with the way this looks right now. And I'm also just gonna try not setting my face at all with powder. I don't think there were any tips that said that, but it's just, while I'm not setting my under eyes, I might as well also not set my face. I used to actually not set my face for a while there. I kind of went through a phase where I was only setting my under eyes and not my face. But I kind of just want to try not setting the face and see what happens. I may add a little note um, in like the description box to let you guys know like any updates on how it wore, what my thoughts were by the end of the day. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of that liquid highlighter to my tops of my cheekbones, kind of over the blush. Just taking it on my fingers and tapping it in. I'm just applying a little bit. I don't want too much because I'm honestly just loving this heavy blush look and I don't want this to like take away from that. And I do feel like if there's any foundation and concealer that are gonna do well without being set, 
it's the Kosas. I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyelids as always. Moving on to a brow tip. This one comes from Alex. And this says, don't brush up, but down first. This will show you any sparse places to fill in. Once completed, then brush up brows and see if any lower area needs some attention. I've seen people doing this, but I've never tried it myself. Okay, if my brows look flaky, it's because of my sunscreen. I'm trying a new sunscreen today. I don't think I'm loving it. It's the Burt's Bees Calming SPF 30. It's a little pilly. Um, not too bad, but I do feel like like in my brows and my hairline, it's pilling a little bit. And so, yeah, I promise this is not dandruff in my eyebrows. It's just my sunscreen kind of pilling up. I look ridiculous with my brows brushed down. Oh my God, don't look at me. And I'm just gonna use my trusty old ABH Dip Brow Pomade for this. I just, I feel like I'm doing it wrong. So I, I do feel like this is kind of like like by filling them in, it's sort of pushing the brow hairs back into in the direction they naturally go. Is that what's supposed to be happening? I'm not sure. Okay, so now that I've kind of got them filled in, brushed down, I'm gonna brush them up like they said, and then see if any lower areas need attention. Do a little bit down here. I like to do really like kind of upward strokes here at the very front of my brow. I definitely was able to successfully fill them in. I don't, I feel like they look kind of the same as they always do though. Like, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I didn't quite do it right, or maybe that's something I need to play around with some more. All right, so for eyeshadow, this first technique is from Lindsay, and she got this tip from Annette's Makeup Corner here on YouTube, and it says, um, to apply shimmers, I put some glitter glue on my hand and dip my flat shader brush in it to apply to my eyelids. Then I use the sticky side of the brush to pick up metallic shades. So, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the NYX glitter primer, but I've never actually tried this particular technique. So, I'm trying to decide what I want to do with my eyeshadow today. I think I'm going to use my e.l.f. Earth and Ocean palette. I'm filming this video on St. Patrick's Day. It'll go up, I think, the day after <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, but I kind of want to do a green look anyway. I've just been really into green eyeshadows recently. I'm going to start out the crease with the shade Mojave Mommy, which is this, this medium brown tone. I'm just gonna do a very light dusting of that into the crease. All right, then I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Spruced Up, which is this matte green, into my crease as well. All right, and then I am also, for the sake of reaching into some of my Panlos eyeshadows, I am gonna take some of Mercury from Subculture and kind of work that into the outer corner. And then I'm going back in with a little bit more of Spruced Up just to kind of redefine that in the crease. Mm, I feel like this is getting muddy. Mm. Maybe the taupey gray mixed with the green wasn't the best idea. Also, look how patchy that subculture shade looks on this eye. So let's try out that tip with the glitter primer. I'm gonna take some of this on the back of my hand. So that's how much I put on my hand. That should be enough. So then I'm going to pick that up on a flat shader brush. This is just the e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. Apply that to my lid with the brush. Normally I use my finger, but I feel like uh, I'm just curious to see how this works. So that tip said, then use the sticky side of the brush to pick up metallic shades. The only thing I'm worried about is, is that gonna mess up or like create hard pan on the shadow? That's my only concern, but we're gonna try it anyway <laughs> for science. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Sahara, this nice shimmery green color here. Please don't hard pan. I guess, you know, worst thing that happens is it hard pans and I can lift it up with tape. Ooh, okay, that is going on nice and intense though. I'm just gonna put that all over my lid. I feel like that kind of has a similar effect to like if I were to apply the shadow with a finger. But if let's say you don't like applying shadows with your finger, I feel like it's going on with like really good intensity. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of Mojave Mommy, the brown, to blend out my crease, just to warm that up a tiny bit. Yeah, it's giving me kind of like a mossy green look. The green paired with that like taupey gray in the outer corner. Normally I probably would have gone with like more of a brown 
rather than like a gray taupe for the outer corner, but I kind of like that. So I'm also going to go in with the shade Sun Yourself for my inner corner, and this is a tip that I learned in the last video that I did like this. Instead of just applying the inner corner highlight around the inner corner, I also now really like taking it up kind of into that crease, that inner crease. That was a tip that one of you guys shared from Ally Glines, and I just love what that does for my eye shape. I feel like it adds so much dimension to the look and it does so much more than, like I still love just your traditional inner corner highlight too, but something about that, it just adds something really special to me, so. And it kind of like opens up my eye a little bit. I do have kind of deep set eyes so I really like how it kind of just opens things up a little bit. I do want to tap a little bit of my Natasha Denona single in the shade Silk. This is in my pan, those eyeshadows. This brush doesn't have a whole lot of stickiness left on it, but I'm just, I'm still going to use that brush for it. And I'm just going to apply that to kind of like the center of my lid, kind of in between the lid shade and the outer corner shade. Normally I would pop that on with a finger, but just kind of wanted to stick with the brush. I'm sweating, I hope you can't tell. <laughs> but man, it's hot in here. And I just drank hot tea, which is probably not helping. All right, so the next eyeshadow tip was from Martina, and she said, blending eyeshadows on the brow bone with a shimmer, an eyeshadow close to my skin tone or with a highlighter. For some reason, at least on me, that looks better than a matte brow bone. It blends them together with the highlighter on the cheekbones, um, temples, and forehead. I'm gonna try it with a highlighter, and this is kind of like a subtle highlighter. It's not super glittery or anything. It's the Estate Do Me Highlighter in Lit. I think this will go well with this eye look too. I normally do do a matte brow bone bird friend out there. So I am excited to see how this will look. I do think that looks really nice. I do think like a nice soft pearly highlighter rather than like a really metallic one is probably the way to go, at least for me, because I don't like for my brow bone to look too frosty, but I think this is like a subtle enough highlighter that that just looks really natural. So I like that. I like putting on brow gel after I've done my eyeshadow. There's a tip from me. <laughs> uh, I feel like sometimes like as I apply eyeshadow my brush can kind of like mess up my brow hairs so I find that doing brow gel after just kind of sets them back into place. I'm gonna put a little bit of, let's do the shade Desert Storm. It's kind of like a mossy brown color on my lower lash line. Just a little bit of that. Okay, so here's a really interesting one from State of Fiction. Only doing my winged liner at the outer corner and out. Makes my eyes look bigger and my lashes look longer. This is something I've been trying to do more. Not necessarily just the outer corner, but I've been trying to do my winged liner like just from the middle of my lash line out. But I do want to try it in kind of like just the outer corner. I'm really curious to see how this looks. I'm going to use this dark brown Felt tip liner from Flower. This is the Forever Wear winged liner in the shade Dark and Stormy. It's like almost like a black brown. Like it's a very, very dark brown. But I'm going to start with the wing and then work it inward. Kind of just stamping that on. And then barely bringing it in past like where that deepest matte shadow is. Yeah, ooh, okay. And I just kind of faded it in like very gently into my outer corner, just so you almost can't really tell where it ends. And I like the idea that this will kind of make my lashes look longer too. Cause I do feel like sometimes with like, you know, a thick line of liquid liner or whatever liner, on the upper lash line kind of covers up your lashes or your lashes don't stand out as much against an already dark backdrop. So 
I'm excited about this technique. So then from Marianne, we have uh, a mascara technique. It says, when applying mascara, tilt your head back while looking in a mirror held at face level. This helps you get right at the base of your lashes. Sounds very obvious, but for some reason I never do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with my Milk Makeup Rise Mascara. I like the way this mascara looks on my lashes, but I don't like how flaky it is, so I wouldn't really recommend it, honestly. All right, so I'm holding my mirror at face level. And tilting upward. Hoping this will help me also like not make a mess too because I'm really bad about just getting mascara all over my eyelid. I also feel like this is helping me not wrinkle my forehead so much. I'm so bad about like raising my eyebrows while I do my eyeshadow, my liner, my mascara, just all of it. I'm always like, but this is kind of helping me relax my forehead a little bit. Curious to see how the lack of setting powder on the under eyes will affect my mascara, like is my mascara gonna smudge or transfer more than usual? That'll be interesting to see. I do feel like having the liquid liner only on the outer corners also definitely helping my lashes stand out more than usual. I almost forgot, I am gonna take a little bit of Wrestler from Wild West. This is also in my Panda's eyeshadows. Just gonna pop a little bit of that on the inner part of my lower lash line. And then I am also going to go in with a little bit of my CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in brown on the lower lashes. Alright, so the final tip is for the lips. This is from Emily, and she said, um, I use lip balm and then grab a lipstick bullet that's on the more pigmented side, like a red lipstick, and I dab it on my lips gently. It creates a beautiful wash of color. I'm not sure how a red lip is going to go today, but I am going to try it with a red, like a true red. This is uh, Cosmo from Estate. Um, but I am going to go ahead and apply some balm first. I'm just going to use the Ilia Lip Wrap Reviving Balm. And just I'm just going to put like a very light layer of this on, not too much. I'm going to even dab a little bit of that off on my hand just so that it's not too like slippery. And then I'm going to take some of this red lipstick and kind of dab it on. So I do really like the way that looks, but I don't think red goes well with this eye look. So let me take that off. I'm going to try another color. I actually kind of want to try it. This is more of a nude, but it's kind of like a deeper nude for me. This is the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Nectar. And I'm thinking this is kind of like a nice earthy, almost terracotta nude. I think this will go really well with this look, but I do kind of want to try this with this like sheared out over lip balm kind of technique. So I do think I will probably do that sheared out red another time though with a look that, it, you know, it'll go better with because that did look really pretty. And I feel like the lip balm kind of prevents it from looking patchy. Whereas if you were to just kind of dab that red on on its own in a sheer way, it might look a little bit patchy. So I like that idea a lot. All right, then just going in with this color. Okay, I feel like it's looking kind of messy and that's probably my own fault. Maybe that wasn't the best color to use for that technique because it is like a lighter color as it is. It's not like a bright red or anything, but I do really like the way that, that color goes with this eye look. I feel like I got a little messy here. That's my problem with the blotted lip. I feel like it just like, it gets outside my lip line and it starts to look really messy really easily. So I don't know, I might take a little bit of concealer and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, that's better. I do really like that color and the way that that just ties in this whole look. So I think that those are all of the tips that I can possibly fit on my one face today. But I, so far, I really like the look. I almost, you know what's funny? I almost forgot that I didn't put foundation on my nose. It doesn't look bad. Okay, at first I was like, this feels weird. I just feel like it's obvious. But now that I have my whole face of makeup on and I put some blush on my nose, I feel like it just kind of evened everything out. And you know, it does make me think like, is it really necessary for me to put foundation on my nose? Probably not because it's not like I have very much like discoloration on my nose or anything. So I will keep that in mind. I'm gonna see if that tip ends up sticking. I feel like out of habit, I'm probably gonna go back to just putting foundation on my nose because I don't usually have a problem with the way that foundation looks on my nose as it is. I don't feel like it ever like sits weirdly on my nose typically. It's not like a problem area for my face. So I will say I do feel a little weird not having any powder on my under eyes. It is a habit, but at the same time, I also do feel like, I just feel like my under eye concealer is fading. Definitely not as much as other ones would. The Kosas one I definitely think is the best one for not powdering because it, it does kind of 
stick around pretty well even without powder but I still just feel like it's kind of sliding around and I do feel like some of that coverage has kind of faded away a little bit but I am really curious to see like maybe by the end of the day I will like how my under eyes look better than if I had if I had powdered them because I do feel like often by the end of the day my under eyes do look a little dry so I would say my favorite techniques from today were probably um, applying my contour and blush higher up and applying the blush all the way up under the eyes. I really like that effect. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a matter of figuring out how that's going to work with my under eye concealer and how like setting or not setting with powder is going to fit into that. I also really like the uh, winged liner only in the outer corner. I think that looks so just subtle and just kind of keeps my eyes more open and I do feel like the spot concealing helped me use just less foundation overall so overall none of these were a fail I would say the brow one brushing the brow hairs down beforehand I don't know if I would do that one again just because I don't feel like it changed like the end result really but I don't know maybe I'll try it a few more times just to see if I find like a different way of doing it but yeah thank you guys so much for sending in your makeup tips I had so much fun filming this and I'm really excited to see which of these techniques end up kind of sticking around and being a regular part of my makeup routine from now on um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you've not already and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video bye